morning, everyone. Um, I am going to do a technique today um, with black background. It is a little recipe I came up with um, for kind of a chalkboard, a vintage chalkboard um, background on paper. And then I was going to use white um, on top of the black. Some different pieces that I've done in a couple different ways. So we're going to use um, black paint, this black paint, chalkboard paint that I made um, out of, it's four different ingredients. Um, and I am also using this transfer paper um, by Sorol. It um, is available on Amazon. I'll try and um, link the um, link to it below. If you can't um, get a hold of this, another um, thing that we're going to use that would be an alternative would be a um, oil pastel and um, a piece of shiny um, magazine paper. And um, I'll show you how to do that. That will be uh, an alternative if you don't have access to the transfer paper, the white transfer paper. But I just wanted to go quickly over how I kind of add my layers. So this um, chalkboard paint, I wanted that plaster feel in black, like a like a vintage chalkboard uh, feeling on my paper. So I mixed um, three different black paints, plaster of Paris and matte medium. And that's something I'll share in one of my classes that's coming out soon. Um, um, but today I'm just going to do it real quick so it's not a long drawn out process. And I just kind of wanted to show you how I apply it to different kinds of paper. So I just grabbed out some different dark papers, some vintage um, tissue paper. I'm using craft paper. I had some mixed media paper that had some marks on it already. Um, I grabbed that out of my stash. Um, this is a vintage sewing pattern. I also grabbed um, some canvas, some drop cloth canvas that I'm going to coat. You can use this on the same, the same way we use our plaster that um, I like to do it on like um, lace or anything that you do the plaster technique on. You can do this with the black um, chalk paint plaster. So I guess it's really just a black plaster. And I also grabbed some um, black tissue paper. And the reason I love tissue paper is when you're collaging, it's just such a beautiful, um, thin surface to layer, um, on your collage. It doesn't take up a lot of thickness. And so I really love that. And then it's also really cool to kind of, um, infuse it with the plaster. It turns out really pretty. So... So all I'm going to do, I'm going to go through and I'm just going to um, prep all of these um, little pieces and let them dry and then I'll come back and we'll start uh, doing the transfer technique. All right, so um, I coated all of my papers with the plaster, the black plaster uh, chalkboard um, technique and I let them dry. Um, this is how they all turned out. I also grabbed out just some plain black paper. So you can do this technique on, um, just dark paper, black paper. I grabbed some craft paper and I also had, um, some bleached papers that I thought would be fun to play with, with this technique to add more layers on top. So I pulled some of those out, but use your imagination, like whatever you have, um, around that's, that maybe is just crying out for a little more um, interest. Grab that out. Um, so the images I also uh, use for this are magazine pages. I have a sketch that I drew that I'm not like super thrilled with, but I would love to see what happens if I um, further um, destroy or distress that. Um, I have photocopies of some vintage photos. This is my grandmother and her sister. So that means a lot to me. Some little pieces of interesting 
um, illustrations of vintage flowers or moths or um, butterflies, birds, anything that just that that you like that's interesting to you. Um, pictures out of magazines of flowers, and you can see here I've used these. You can, you can use them multiple times, um, so I've already used those. I also grabbed out some fashion magazines and took out the interesting faces that I was drawn to. So you don't need a whole lot of things. I mean, if you pull out three or four interesting pieces out of a magazine or even a photocopy or something off the internet that you print um, to try this technique, it could be an old book, even a vintage book that you could use. And so this is the transfer paper um, after I've used it a few times. So I'm gonna start a fresh piece. I grabbed a book out to work on top of. My table is rough, so I wanted a little bit better piece. So this transfer paper has a, a wrong side and a right side. Um, you can kind of tell the slicker side is the t side that you want to uh, draw on. And I'm going to cut this down. I really, because of the way that I work and, and um, like reimagining all of these pieces into bigger sheets, I do start small and I just like it. You know, it's just easier to do a lot and get, um, get a lot of things going. Um, so I do like to work that way. You can also work on a large seat sheet. You know, if you want to just put down a, a sheet of mixed media paper or watercolor paper or some vintage paper, um, do that. So whatever like you like to do, whatever feels comfortable. I also grabbed a little bit of masking tape out because that helps me um, keep things kind of steady. And I am just going to go for, this was a piece of vintage book paper. And I'm going to put that right there. And I think I'm going to make this a little smaller just so I have more control of where I'm, where I'm um, putting my marks. So I love this technique because if you're not an illustrator or someone who's really comfortable with drawing or sketching, this is a great way to practice those skills and to get some really interesting pieces um, to work into your journals and collage work and it's just super fun. It's super relaxing. There's not a lot of, um, you know, stress with it. And you can make it as abstract as you want. I mean, you can really abstract out the faces or the flowers, you know, just really use like this as, as a template. Um, so just have fun with it. You know, like that's, that's the best part of this is just getting into that meditation mode of, of art making and so, um, I want to make this a little bit smaller than my page. Again, I'm being mindful of the right side of this, and you can tell that by, if you just draw on it, you'll get the good mark. So I'm going to use a little bit of tape here just to keep everything kind of stable and worked. And then I'm going to just lay this right down um, on the center. And I'm using um, a Papermate, just really cheap pen. Let me move over a little. And you could you can use a pencil. I like Pilot pens. Um, you know, a sharp pencil, a skewer, anything that just that you can make a mark um, that you can push pretty hard. That's not going to like puncture through the delicate um, magazine paper. So let's just go with a really simple shape. Um, and, you know, just really abstract out the face, like go back over, make interesting marks. You don't have to push super hard, but you do want to firm pressure. And you're just going to follow those shadows and the interest. You know, the line, you just want the line. You want the idea of the face. It doesn't have to be perfect. You don't have to get every little minute detail. Each one will be different. You can use the same um, 
piece over and over multiple times. You know, if you like more of a um, organic line, you know, just really, really lean into your marks and, and just have fun. You can't see what's happening, which is really part of the intrigue with this. And you know, you're gonna, your, your paper's smaller than this, so you're gonna miss some things, which is good too. because you just want that interest. You know, like maybe cheekbone. And see how I'm just kind of scribbling and I'm going back over my marks. And you can re, um, you know, go re on top of this with another image. So I'm going to, I'm just going to say good. I lifted it up and I can kind of see I caught all of her features, her eyes and her nose and her mouth. Um, and I think that's a good, good start. I'm just going to go back in a little bit. I think I missed a little tiny part of her nose. So there you go. So that's the first, um, Step. I like to add, I like to go into this and add some other marks um, so I can see my transferred image here. And now I can just kind of embellish it. And maybe it's flowers or, you know, maybe it's just marks. You know, you can lift it up, see what's happening. You know, I want more up here. I want that to go off the paper more. But really cool first mark. So I love this. I'm going to layer a another element on top of this. And I think I'm going to pick this moth. Maybe this real tiny one, just so it goes quickly. So I'm just gonna lay her down. Um, again, I'm just using the same big pen or paper. I think it's paper mate. And just slowly tracing. You know, when you're when you're tracing too, you know, do move your pen around a little, like. Don't feel like it's just got to be pressed down in real straight lines. You want like to give it that organic, very sketchy interest. The more you let go, the cooler the marks become. So that's my first, my first one. Let's do one more. So you can reuse these uh, lots of times. Let's see, let's do the bigger piece. So I'm gonna save this one and get a little bigger piece of the transfer paper. Again, making sure you're on the right side. I'm just going to catch that, both of those little pieces. So for this one, um, let's do the more sketchy. So this is something that I sketched while I was looking at something probably on the internet, um, just really quick on cheap um, newsprint. I love newsprint, it's just very vintage looking and old and it's cheap and it actually collages really well too. 
So I'm just going to go over her. And the cool thing too is like each piece, um, you know, I, I'm adding my marks again to this piece, which I really think is cool. And I'm abstracting it out even more. And then by using a different pen, I think when I first drew this, it was the Sharpie. And I'm just going to get even more, you know, interest. And then this piece will be... Um, really interesting too because I'm adding more marks on top of it and really think about that when you're uh, making pieces and art you know the more you add to it the more the story builds and it's really fun to play so I want to make sure that I caught all of her features um, because she was a little thicker, so that's really cool, and I love her. Very abstracted. I might go back in a little and fix fix the eye. Maybe add some more marks. And then so by having this kind of all um, taped down, it's really cool. So yeah, just have fun with these and you can do them two or three times. You know, I could, I could pull this out and just go ahead and just do it again and do it again. And every time you do it, it's like looser, you know, just adding little marks. Super interesting. Okay, so another way to get this uh, type of look is if you don't have access to transfer paper, you need to order it, or um, it's not something you have um, access to where you live, you can also do this um, with a oil pastel. And... Um, I use like a glossy piece of magazine paper. I just want to show you this real quick. So what I found too, um, I wanted to mention that you can um, just gesso your pages like with just black gesso. That works too. I, I like to add the little bit of the Plaster of Paris. I like it's grittier, it's earthier. And I just like the way it looks and feels in your hand. It also works really well with the oil pastel um, technique. I think it's just because there's more ridges and there's more things to um, for it to hold on to. But, but what you want to do is um, just coat your magazine paper with a generous coating of your oil pastel. And you just want to make sure that most of it's covered. And we're going to do the same thing. So we're just going to use the transfer of the oil pastel onto onto this. Let me see if I can find a little piece of And again, masking tape just helps kind of hold everything together and makes it a little bit easier. So for this one, let's just do a very simple rose. So I've gone over and over this um, several times today. I'm going to use this pilot pen. It has a little bit of a finer tip. 
And let's just abstract out these roses. And you can totally do this just freehand, like if you want to just um, doodle on top of that, you can do that. So I moved it a little bit, I saw that I did that, and that's okay. And just have fun with it. You want these to be really free and not serious. And So that's that's um, how it transfers with the oil pastel onto the black paper. Um, let's do another little let's do this up there. Use this pen again. I'm just gonna do really simple just the shape this time. So this, this wasn't catching, um, there's no oil pastel up there, so it kind of didn't catch that, but that's how that is. So you can kind of see the difference um, with the oil pastel and the, trans the white transfer paper. It looks a little different, but the sky's the limit and you can just really go crazy with getting different um, pieces for your journals and anything. This was um, tissue paper. This was a piece of some kind of paper I had in my stash. This was the canvas. A little piece of watercolor paper. This was mixed media paper. This was just black paper um, with no coating on it with the oil pastels. So yeah. A lot of fun to do this technique and um, to use in your collage. But so thanks for playing along with me. Um, oh, let's do one one last one with some of the bleach paper, just real quick. Let's
it was on the bleach paper. So thanks for following along with me today, and I hope you have fun with this technique. If you have any questions, leave them here um, and share what you make on Instagram. Um, I'm at Amy Irel on Instagram, and I'd love to see what you create.